Hello again, and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthway. Um, Carla is out feeling a little under the weather today, so I'm flying solo. Um, thought about having a guest, but then I realized there's enough to talk about. I can talk for 30 minutes easily. Um, anyways, uh, as you might have noticed, Carla and I did not do a show last week. That's because we were both up north um, in Lancaster um, vacationing for a week. Um, it was a good week. A good week. Dan and I um, actually did two camping trips. We have a newer camper to a 2018 camper, new to us. Uh, we took it up to Umbaga, Umbagog, I was told, um, lake way up in Errol, New Hampshire. Absolutely beautiful. We went to Pittsburgh. We went to Colebrook. Uh, we saw a moose, did the whole thing, uh, and then spent the week in Lancaster. Also beautiful. Um, great weather. You know, nice to have it cooler at night and sunny in the daytime when you're camping. Um, but anyways, that's where we were last week. Uh, this week, Carla's a little under the weather, so she won't be here. And then next week, um, Brendan and all of the people here at the studio get a much needed break over the 4th of July weekend week holiday. Um, so we won't be taping next week. We won't be back for another week. Um, so just, you know, uh, as you all can tell, summer's here. Uh, weather is uh, very warm this week, um, especially this coming Friday. Uh, you want to make sure you've got your air conditioners turned on ahead of time if you are if you have them. Um, it's going to be in the high 90s on Friday. It's going to be like gorgeous 80s most of the days, but Friday is going to be a scorcher um, high 90s. Um, that being said, let's see if I can fill 30 minutes by myself. Um, I thought about like what ha what's happen what's happening around town. I do have a couple different issues, um, but before I get into a very Manchester specific issue, I thought I'd talk about something that is on everybody's um, seems topic radar these days. Um, last Friday, the United States Supreme Court um, overturned the Roe decision that prohibited abortions, um, and the. the the decision actually didn't, despite what you might read, despite all the scare tactics that some t seem to be uh, trying to make people think this means, the only thing that actually happened by um, overturning Roe was that the decisions on abortion laws goes back to the states where it should have been kept in the first place. We could debate all day long whether or not X state or, you know, whether Alabama's abortion laws are right or whether Texas abortion laws are right. But the reality is, is that unless something is specifically enumerated in the United States Constitution, it does default to the states to decide for themselves. That's what that's what federalism. That is how it works. That is how our country is was established so that all the states have all of their own uh, decision making abilities. They may set their own laws, except for the few things that are actually enumerated in the United States Constitution. So back in the 70s, when Roe was first um, decided, then the Supreme Court th felt that um, it was in the United States Constitution. And now um, that has been overturned. So what does that mean for actually for people in New Hampshire, specifically even people in Manchester? Actually, nothing changes whatsoever. The row being overturned does absolutely nothing in New Hampshire. The laws in New Hampshire regarding abortion that were in effect last Thursday are the same exact laws that are in effect in New Hampshire today. Um, despite what the Democrats would have you believe. I do believe that um, this is an election year. We're going to be electing uh, U.S. senators and uh, our two U.S. congressmen. We're going to elect a governor and the whole entire state house um, in November. And I think uh, the Democrats are grasping at anything to try to um, re-energize the base that I think they have eroded with their um, uber progressive agendas and um, the dismal um, approval rating that Joe Biden has right now. Um, people, reality is, is that people are paying $5 a gallon for gas. Inflation is up 20%. Food prices are up. Uh, heating oil and natural gas prices are up. We're being told that our electric rates are gonna nearly double. I mean, it's, it's insane. This is what people really have to deal with on a day in day out basis. And the Democrats don't have a leg to stand on to get people to support their candidates when they've caused all that. 
So now with the with the road decision, now they're going to try to put fear into you that make you think that, you know, oh, my God, we're going to go. We're going to be oppressing women somehow. And um, I thought it was interesting that uh, here in New Hampshire, the Democrats, the the Democrats are doing exactly just that. Um, What is equally peculiar is. In New Hampshire, we have a process for um, submitting legislation and the, how that legislation goes through the process. Um, there is no reason why at any point prior to this uh, Supreme Court decision that if the Democrats in New Hampshire were truly concerned about codifying um, abortion rights in our state constitution um, or any law for that matter, they could have done so prior to this decision. There's nothing stopping them. Um, in an article that was on, I think this was on Union Leader. Yes, it was. It was Union Leader article. Uh, Senate Democratic Leader Donna Susie of Manchester said her colleagues would consider forming a petition to pursue, pursue a special session to codify abortion protections in state law um, if Governor Sununu denies the request for one. So why do we need a special session? Because you could have put these bills in at any time, and we there would have been the same group of legislators would have voted on them. So if Donna Susie really thought that we needed to codify abortion protections in the state of New Hampshire, she could have proposed a piece of legislation that would have went through the normal process um, in the past two-year cycle, and it would have been voted on by the, the legislators that are there currently, as would be the case if they had a special session now. This isn't this isn't practical. This isn't, this doesn't even make sense, quite honestly. What you've got is the Democrats, including Donna Susie of Manchester, saying, oh my God, because of Roe, we have to have a special session so that we can protect women from being forced to have children or whatever they want to scare you into thinking. Um, I don't think, I don't think that, um, a special session is warranted. Um, there's no reason why Democrats who, or anybody who believes that we need to codify abortion protections in New Hampshire, they can file legislation for the upcoming cycle and then go from there. I mean, I guess maybe they're worried that the Republican majority will just increase in New Hampshire and getting any sort of abortion protection in state law um, will probably be that much harder. Uh, not all Republicans, including Governor Sununu, are pro-life. I happen to be pro-life. Um, I also happen to think that reasonable restrictions on abortion um, are exactly that. They are reasonable. And in case you didn't know, this is what the law, this little one-page number, what the law in New Hampshire regarding abortions is. Except in a medical emergency as specified in paragraph three, no health care provider shall knowingly perform, induce, or attempt to perform an abortion upon a pregnant woman when the probable gestational age of her fetus has been determined to be at least 24 weeks or in the absence of a determination by a health care provider pursuant to paragraph one. So 24 weeks, six months pregnant. That means New Hampshire allows abortions legally up until the third trimester of um, pregnancy. If you can't figure out that you're pregnant by this by six months into it, um, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Um, if you're worried about people with medical conditions, they have exemptions. Uh, medical emergency means a condition when a, in which an abortion is necessary to preserve life of the pregnant woman whose life is endangered by a physical disorder, physical illness, physical injury, including a life endangering endangering physical condition caused by or arising from the pregnancy itself, or when continuation of the pregnancy will create a serious risk of substantial or irreversible impairment of a major bodily function. So if you have an ectopic pregnancy, which you hear about all the time, where where the, the, the fetus is embedded outside of the uterus, that's that would fall under an exception um if there is a any condition where the mother's life is in danger that would fall under the exception uh people talk about rape incest things like that i'm not not say 24 weeks is well beyond if you were raped you would know if if you are a victim of incest you would know there are ways in new hampshire um so 
I think everything you're going to hear from New Hampshire Democrats about the uh, the immediate need for you know special sessions and oh my God all the terrible things that the Supreme Court decision is doing to the women in New Hampshire are just that they are scare tactics they're doing that to try to raise um, their base's interest in voting for Democrats in November I think it'll fail because I do not think. Um, with all the terrible things happening in New Hampshire, the gas prices, the heating prices, the food prices, the increase in rent, the unavailable housing, everything. Those are the things that are on the minds of voters, um, not whether or not they should be able to have an abortion in New Hampshire six months into a pregnancy. Enough about that. So that was one topic. Um, back on a more local um, note, in, um, I think this was yesterday's paper. It might have been the day before because I've kind of lost track of what day is. Today's the 20th. So on um, Sunday's paper, there was an article about a proposed Manchester Community Center. Now, for the past few months, I know or I have been aware of um, different entities working to um, establish a community center on the west side of Manchester. Um for a variety of reasons. One, the west side of Manchester is a large portion of the city of Manchester as a whole. Uh, the Boys and Girls Club happens to be on the east side of the river. Uh, the Community Health Center is on the east side of the river. A lot of things are all on the east side of the river, yet the west side of Manchester is significantly large and deserves um, the kids over there, the poor, those in uh, need of services on the west side, which there are many of, uh, they deserve the same type of services on the, that side of the river. So from what I recall, there was um, there were like three um, community meetings back in April and early May. Um, they weren't at the best times. I think one of them was during a d the daytime, one was on a Saturday, and one was at like five o'clock in the evening. Very difficult to attend. They were, um, no. I think when I first read about them, it was like, a week before the meetings, and I know I wasn't able to attend because I wanted to, um, but we had things going on in our lives that prevented us from attending these meetings. From what I've heard from other people, the meetings themselves were not very well attended, and I've heard from some people who were there that they didn't feel that the people putting on the meetings really seemed to have um, a specific direction or that was being driven by the neighborhood itself. Um, so anyways, in this, in this article from Sunday, um, the group, which is made up of very many organizations, so I can get to that in a second, um, had made a proposal to the Aldermanic Committee on Lands and Buildings to purchase from the city a parcel of land adjacent to um, Parkside Middle School and Gosler Park School um, over on, in Manchester's Ward 11. So this committee of, I believe, five um, actually voted to just send it on to the aldermen. They're not really doing the work of the, that committee sh subcommittee should do. Um, I think the subcommittee should be doing their di due diligence and finding out more about exactly how this would work before we decide whether or not Manchester is going to sell a very large parcel of land to an entity for them to build something that I don't believe at this point the community has actually put enough input in. Um, I know some folks who are abutters to the property who had no idea that this was gonna this was going on. I know people who have been involved in the process who are involved with and support the idea of a community center on the west side who did not know that this proposal with a very specific pre parcel of land was going to go to the alderman now. Um, the proposal for the Mark Stebbins Community Center, which I believe at some point will just become the Stebbins Community Center, um, that was proposed on June 10th to the Lands and Building Committee, um, would like this, they say, um, there's two key elements to this project moving forward. One is acquiring land in the heart of Manchester's west side, and two is completing a community needs analysis with a target date of June 2022. From what I understand, that um, community needs analysis has not been completed. Um, I do not believe there's been significant input from the actual people in the area that this uh, community center would be located. 
Um, I, for one, am not against building a community center on the west side. I had a lengthy conversation with somebody last night about locations and is this really the best use of that parcel of land because it is green space in a much needed in an area that needs green space. Um, it's adjacent to the middle school and the, the elementary school. The kids play there. Um, if we build a build, and it's the location of um, the Parkside Community Garden, which would have to get relocated to another part of that parcel. Um, so that would be impacted. Um, and is it, they claim that it's on a bike, on a bus route. I don't see any bus route that goes down Blucher Street or past the schools. There is a bus route that stops at Rite Aid down near CMC. That's a hike up the hill. That, that's a, you know, good walk from where this would be located. Um, it is, a, in my opinion, a residential neighborhood. It will have direct impact both because of foot traffic, um, vehicle traffic um, to the neighborhood itself. And I, I, I'm i very familiar with the streets there. I'm just not really sure that this is the best use. Um, of the, Among the um, community part, nonprofit partners and community supporters who've been involved are the Boys and Girls Club. I think that's the bulk of this is to provide um, a Boys and Girls Club on the west side. Um, which Mark Stebbins was a, a very generous donor to the Boys and Girls Club on the east side. Amoskeg Health, Easter Seals, Waypoint, Granite State YMCA, Southern New Hampshire Services, Catholic Charities, Mental Health Center of Greater Manchester, Granite United Way, and then it just says several other nonprofit agencies, uh, Catholic Medical Center, St. Mary's Bank, Mayor Craig's Office, um, Manchester Health Department, Manchester School District, um, and it, uh, it says that the Mark Stebbins Community Center has applied for 501c3 status, um, but they have not actually obtained that yet. So this does seem a bit premature for them to be asking the city to change the um, the the clarification. The I don't know what the word I've lost my word. The the type of pro, uh, land it is that the city owns so that it can be sold. They have to make it excess land um, so that the city can sell it. Um, they are talking about purchasing the 4.15 acre property for $600,000, which is what the subcommittee agreed to. I don't think the city came up with that price. I think the organization wanting to buy it came up with that price. I don't think that's how land should be sold. I mean, there should be a market analysis of what the value of that land is. And if that land could be sold for a million two, should the city take a loss? Um, I have questions. Will this building, um, will this parcel then become a taxable entity or will they, we continue to not get taxes on that land? Because there's going to be impact and costs involved to the taxpayers of uh, the city when this is built. So will we be able to um, get any of that back in the way of property taxes, or will they be um, exempt because of their nonprofit status? Um, it's a 4.15 acre property. Um, the building supposedly will ho house multiple organizations, with the anchor agencies being the Boys and Girls Club of Manchester and Amoskeg Health. And it's expected to be a two-story uh, two building, about 440,000 square feet, um, with a cost of $17 million. I'd like to know. Do, is all of that 17 million going to come from the private sector or is this something that the city of Manchester is going to jump in and spend tax dollars on? Um, not saying there's no reason to spend tax dollars. I'm just saying that the, the way it's being pitched is that it's a nonprofit thing. So is it a hundred percent nonprofit? Um, it doesn't seem like the specifics are in place. It's not like there is a design and here's exactly the property, and here's how we want to lay it out, and here's what how the impact will be on the neighborhood, et cetera, et cetera. And these are the the organizations that will be in the facility. None of that is available. All of that is speculative. So what happens if we sell the property for six hundred thousand dollars to the Mark Stevens Community Center, and they fail to get their five one one three C status, or they fail to get the money to build the building. What happens to the property then? Do they just build whatever they want on it? There's a lot of questions in my opinion. Um, so my my thoughts, the next aldermanic meeting is on, I believe, Tuesday, July 17th, because they're on the first and third um, 
first and third Tuesdays of the month. And there is none at the first week because that's the 4th of July holiday, um, the Independence Day holiday. I should correct myself. Um, so you have a few weeks to uh, reach out to the alderman and let them know that you think, if you think this is a good idea. Personally, I'm going to reach out to the alderman and say I think they need more community input. There needs to be um, some public hearings specifically on this specific parcel of land, not on the general idea of should there be a community center, on this specific parcel of land. The abutters all need to be notified that this is being discussed. All of this should happen. So you can contact your alderman. If you live over there in Ward 11, which we will be most impacted, you can call Alderman Gamash at 669 5817. Um, he lives at 176 Cumberland Street. So if you walk, if you're walking your neighborhood and you want to just knock on his door, feel free. Again, Norm Gamash, 669-5817. You could contact either of the aldermen at large. Uh, Joe Lavasser is at 622-7575. And June Trisiani is at 502-7800. Um, you can always go on the city website and search for uh, Board of Mayor and Alderman, and they have this handy dandy list that shows all their email addresses and their phone numbers and their addresses and all that good stuff. Um, because it, this doesn't, this might specifically impact Ward 11 the most. It impacts the west side of Manchester second most, but it likely impacts the entire city because it does impact um, the tax base and what the city's doing with their properties. So um, I encourage you to reach out and contact people and get involved with that. Um, this is a big undertaking. It shouldn't be taken lightly. And I think it needs more due diligence. On to happier, more exciting things. Um, this coming week is the Independence Day holiday on the 4th. Um, Manchester will be celebrating on July 3rd in Arms Park. Um, with a rain date of Tuesday, July 5th. So it'll either be on Sunday, July 3rd, or Tuesday, July 5th. We don't do the fireworks on actual Independence Day because I believe it's probably harder to get the, I don't know, never have. Um, took us forever to get Halloween to happen on Halloween. Maybe someday Independence Day fireworks will happen on Independence Day. Anyways, um, the celebration will happen at Arms Park, which is the one where the stairs go into the river. Um, it's free. Everyone's invited. There are no pets allowed. You can bring your own chairs and picnic dinner for your family. There will be food vendors on site starting at 6 p.m. No alcoholic beverages or glass bottles are allowed. Uh, portable toilets will be available. The 39th, Arm, the 39th Army Band will be on stage starting at 7.30, and fireworks will begin at dusk, which is about 9.30 at night. Um, both east and westbound spans of the Notre Dame Bridge, which most of you just call the Bridge Street Bridge, which if you think about is just a strange name. How can you have the Bridge Street Bridge? Anyways, um, they will be closed to tra all traffic, foot and vehicle, starting at 8 a.m. on Sunday. Um, if you have any more information, you can contact the city at 624-6444, extension 5347. Um, I also want to remind people that the city's um, pools and splash pads are open. Um, Livingston Pool on Daniel Webster Highway is open seven days a week from 1 to 5 p.m., in 6 to 8 p.m. weather permitting. Um, this goes through August 14th. They have lap swim Monday through Friday from 12 p.m. to 12.45 p.m. Um, that's up in uh, Livingston Park. Uh, then there is also the Rayco Theodore Pool, which is right around the corner from my house. Also open seven days a week, one to five, six to eight. Um, it is located on Head Street. Uh, they have swim meets there every summer and it's always on the best weekends which kind of stinks swim week swim meet weekends are this coming weekend june 30th to july 2nd so you could still go um on sunday the third just not on not saturday not friday when it's going to be the hottest and then also july 15th through 17th and july 29th through 31st um Again, that is Rayco Theater Pool on Head Street. Hunt Memorial Pool in Manchester, which is the one near Gill Stadium, is unfortunately closed for 2022. Um, they have a lot of problem -ish, mechanical issues over there, and they're, I've heard speculation that they're considering turning into a splash pad, splash pad, which I think is a great idea. And speaking of splash pads, the DuPont Splash Pad is open seven days a week from 11 in the morning till 7 p.m. It's located on Mason Street. Um, great place to bring the, the kids to cool off. Um, 
And of course, there is Crystal Lake Park, which is located off of Bodwell Road. If you prefer to swim in, in like a pondish, lakeish type thing, um, there is no life guide on duty. They are open seven days a week, noon to eight p.m. Um, it is swim at your own risk. Um, so that is a lot. See, I can do thirty minutes by myself. Um, if you have anything um, that you'd like Carla and I to talk about on a few future episode. Or if you'd like more information about anything that I talked about today, I'd gladly send you links to the proposal for the community center, um, links to New Hampshire RSA laws, uh, links to information about upcoming um, cleanups through We Heart West, any of those types of things. You can email us at manchtalk, M-A-N-C-H-T-A-L-K, all one word, at gmail.com, and we'll do our best to accommodate whatever it is you're asking. Um, otherwise, this is going to be a great weather week. We actually are going to have some real summer. Get out there, take a walk, um, ride your bike, check out one of the swimming places in Manchester. Um, just enjoy the weather while we got it and try to remember to stay cool on Friday because it's going to be a scorcher. That's all I got. We'll be off next week because the studio is closed and then Carla and I will return in two weeks um, to talk about more wonderful things impacting you right here in Manchester. That's all I have for now. Enjoy. Bye.